Okay, for this lesson we're going to learn or review multiplying polynomials. And there are two different methods that I'm going to show you today. Um, I'd like for you to be comfortable with both, but ultimately you can choose whichever one you prefer. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is called the area model method. First let me show you what uh, the multiplication problem might look like. Okay, you may have uh, I a binomial, x plus 2, this is called a binomial because there are two terms, um, and it might get multiplied with another binomial, x plus 6. Okay, so um, when we use an area model, we use the fact that in a rectangle or a square, um, length times width is going to give us the area of that rectangle or square. So what we do is we treat this binomial as the length and this one as the width or vice versa, it doesn't matter. So to set up an area model we draw a rectangle and because our length and our width each have two parts we're going to divide those dimensions into two sections like this. And so for example I could put the x plus 2 as the length of my um, rectangle and the x plus 6 as the width. And so when I'm finding the product or the result of multiplying these, that product is really the area of all these individual squares inside here. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do x times x. That's going to give me my first area, which would be x squared. Okay. It may help some of you to think of this as x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1. Uh, back at the beginning of the semester, we talked about when multiplying exponents, we are really adding their powers. And so that's one way you can remember um, that this would be x to the power of 2. To get this area right here, we're going to take the length times width again. So x times 6, that would give us 6x down here. 2 times x would give us 2x. Notice I didn't put the 1 here. That 1 is, is, doesn't have to be there, but you can put it there if you want. And then 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, so each of these represents the individual areas. Of course, we're interested in the, the entire area, and so to find the entire area, we would need to add each of these individual areas together. And so we would have x squared plus 6x plus 2x, which these we combine to be 8x plus 12. And so that would be the area or the product of um, these two binomials. Okay, so that is the area model. Uh, you could have also accomplished this by doing just the distributive method. This is a property that you already are familiar with. Um, for this problem, though, you would use the distributive property twice, okay? So for example, if you just kind of pretend that that 2 is not there and we just had x times this quantity, you would be distributing x into both of these terms. So I'm going to show that with um, arrows, okay? So I'm focusing on just multiplying this term, x, into both terms in the second quantity. And so the result of that would be x times x, which of course is x squared. Again, x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1. I add my powers to get x squared. Then I would do x times 6, which is 6x. Once I've distributed that in, then I have to go back and distribute the 2 in. So I would do 2 times x and 2 times 6. This would leave me with plus 2x and plus 12. Okay. Notice these four terms are the exact same areas that we got in our four sections over here. And so to get our final area or product, um, we would simply combine our like terms here. So we have x squared plus uh, 8x plus 12. Okay, so either method can be used to get the same exact product. I'm going to give you one to try on your own. So let's try 
this one here. Um, let's do 2x plus 7 times x plus 3. I'd like for you to try both the area model and the distributive property. Go ahead and pause the video and give that a try. All right, hopefully you've tried the problem. Um, again, to set up the area model, you're going to create a rectangle. We have a binomial times a binomial, so we need to split that rectangle into two parts on each dimension. Then we're going to have uh, the 2x plus 7 on this side. You could have put it up here and the x plus 3 on the other side. That does not matter, so whatever you choose is fine. Um, then once you start to multiply, again, I'm going to put my little powers here to remind myself. And sometimes it helps students to put a, the coefficient here in front. This is a 1. So you're doing 2 times 1, which is 2, and x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1, which is x to the power of 2. Then we're doing 2x times 3. So again, we're just really multiplying the, the constant with the coefficient. So that would give me 6x. Then I have 7 times 1x would give me 7x. And lastly, 7 times 3 would give me 21. So those are each of the individual areas. I, of course, want to find the total area, so I'm going to, come, I'm going to add these together. And when I do that, I know I can add like terms, so I'm going to end up with 2x squared plus a total of 13x's plus 21 as my area or product. If you, had, if you were to do the distributive property, you would start by distributing the first term in the first parentheses, so that would be 2x times x and 2x times 6, and that's going to leave you with, again, if I want to add these little ones here, I can. 2 times 1 is 2, and then x times x is x squared. 2x times 6 is 12x. Then I'm going to distribute the second term here, 7 times x and 7 times 6. And that's going to give me plus 7x plus, let's see. Oh, this should have been a 3. Whoops. OK. So that should have been a 3, which means if I backtrack a second, 2x times 3 would have been 6x. So we'll change this to a 6x. And then going back to the 7 times 3, that would be 21. OK, so once I fix my little mistake there, I can see that I still have the same four areas that I had over here. And then my, pre my area or product is going to be the sum of each of these terms. But of course, I can only add together um, or actually combine my two x terms here, which is a total of 13x and then 21 there. Okay? All right, there's one more problem I want to share with you, and this is one that students often get um, incorrect. So let's, let's show you this, one, this problem here. This time, it's going to look just a little bit different. It's going to be x. Actually, let's put a 3 in there. Let's do 3x minus 2 squared. Okay. Now, sometimes this confuses students because there's not a second binomial here. However, if you remember, when you square something, that means that you're taking something times itself. So really what I want to do is I want to copy-paste this next to itself. So 3x minus 2 squared is 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. And now I have that same type of problem that I had before, binomial times a binomial. And so I can choose to either use the area model or the distributive property to find that area. So go ahead and pause the video and find um, the product or area of these two binomials. Let's see, your final answer should be 9x squared minus 6x minus 6x, that would be minus 12x plus 4. So you should have gotten this for your final answer uh, by doing either one of those methods.